King Leon is, for my money, the most fearsome overworld enemy in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and one of the most memorable Zelda enemy designs of all time. It's absolutely terrifying when you stumble across a Gliok in the wild. Today, I want to recreate this giant three-headed dragon using Lego. Step one is to build the head. To start the head, I'm going to use a printed tile for the eye, then connect a rod and an inverted dome. But we're still missing some wrinkly Gliok eyelids. For those, I'm turning to our trusty ninja minifigure. Ooh. Ooh. These bandanas are two different sizes, so if I stack them, we can get the perfect wrinkly look. For the horn, I'll clip this large spike part to a modified plate and attach four of them to this snot brick with studs all around. I'll connect our two sub-assemblies with a hollow stud and a Technic bushing. Next, it's time to add our Gleox luxurious lashes. I'll use a spike part and connect it into a robot arm. To get the lashes in an arc, I'll use a burnt hot dog and then a clip can connect it into the head. I need a few more lashes at the top, so I'll build up a pair and connect them to a bar and some round plates. Then, with a little minor surgery, I can attach them in alongside the other lashes. For our friendly Gleox toothy grin, I'm gonna steal this bony sword from another minifigure. I'll attach it in to this robot arm before building up a stiff upper lip with this spike, candlestick, and a rod end. Two robo hands can attach that in at the funky angle I need. To attach it into the head, I need to build up some more of the skull. I'll use a snop rick and some clips. Then I can friction weld the rod into one of them before using some Technic bits to serve as a neck joint. To secure this all together, I'm using a Technic brick with a half pin then a rounded plate can lock it in place. The two sub-assemblies can come together, and we can get back to the task at hand of attaching the teeth. With those now in place, it looks like Mr. Gleok stopped one too many hockey pucks with his face. We can fix that by adding a pair of front teeth with some droid arms. I have a lack of connections on the head at this point, so I'll go in and add another clip then assemble a long, toothy staff, which can connect into that new clip. Now I seem to have created the opposite problem to our toothless grin with this new buck tooth look. But that's nothing another burnt hot dog can't fix. Attaching the hot dog in the right place was a different exercise entirely, as I needed to build up this insane assembly of clips and bars in order to position it in just the right place. With that, we're really starting to get somewhere and it's time to turn our attention to the lower jaw. Here, I'll add some small and large spikes to a robot arm. The jaw structure can be built up from this one x six plate, which I'll add some clips to so I can attach the teeth. I'll use some minifigure binoculars to hold the front teeth and then sandwich that between the two lower jaw halves. A quick test fit confirms we're on the right track. I'll strengthen the jaw with another snot brick and then add a curved slope so I can attach a magenta flag to serve as the Gleox serpent-like tongue. I'd still like to add some more teeth, so I ordered a bunch of these bone weapon packs to get enough swords for all three heads. After clipping them in place, I'm gonna turn my attention to building up some spiky stubble for King Gleok. I'll use another pair of binoculars to up the stubble density before using a bunch more snot parts to get a couple more spikes in place. This is the added benefit of further strengthening our jaw assembly. Finally, this large flag part can cap off the lower jaw. To attach the two jaw halves, I'll add some inkwell bits to the lower jaw and then connect a three long rounded plate to one side and a robot arm to the other. The slight difference in dimensions between these two parts makes the friction higher for the jaw connection. I'll finish off the head by adding a few more spikes.
Let's fast forward to the fun part, where I can show off the electric and the ice Gleok heads to complete the King Gleok trio of terror. One thing these heads still need is their elemental powers flowing from their horns. Starting with the ice energy, I'll stack up a bunch of these Legends of Chima crystal parts and cap things off with the classic crystal for a cool look. For our friend with the flame head, I want to use this beautiful Duplo flame part. The only problem being that it only connects via Duplo stud. That won't stop me from just shoving this Technic connector in there though. Next, I'll use these old flame parts, which you can conveniently connect together to form larger flame chains. I'll attach those together and connect them in for a fire look. LEGO conveniently produced the perfect part for my electric head. With this Hero Factory weapon, I'll attach a clip and then replace one horn with this sub-assembly. One finishing touch is this lightning bolt and a candlestick, which completes this shocking look. Next up, I need to design some necks to hold our newly built Gleok heads. Each neck has appropriately colored energy peeking out from behind its dark red scales. For me to recreate that here, I want to use these wedge parts, which can stack up for the perfect look. To get the neck to be appropriately flexible, I'm going to build it on a flex tube and stack one brick thick sections so that I can maintain the pattern we figured out earlier. Let's design a section now. To start, I'll use this Technic brick, which I can thread onto the flex tube. Then I'll add some small brackets and our colored slope. To get a stud reversal, I'll use more brackets and lock them in place with these slopes. This makes the assembly really strong once I connect the back studs with a 1x2 brick. I'll cap it off with a curved slope, then I'll build up another with a dark red scale instead. These can still stack nicely when I eventually thread them onto our flex tube. For the spiky sections at the top of the neck, I'll make two more variations of the assembly, using some clips and spikes to get the look we're going for. These can still stack, but really need the eventual curve of the neck to avoid clipping one another. Finally, I need to build up the anchors at the top and bottom of the neck to attach the head and body respectively. For the head, I'll use a socket to connect to our existing ball joint. I'll adorn it like the other neck sections with some curved slopes and spikes. This other anchor needs to be really strong since it will have the weight of the neck and head cantilevered out from it. To that end, I'll use three ball joints. Now, I'll go ahead and thread all the sections onto the flex tube. Ready? Let's go! Well, the neck is certainly flexible, but there is no way it'll support its weight this way. Luckily, I was already planning for this, and we can add more flex tube to the sides which we can tension relative to one another so that it's still flexible enough to pose, but strong enough to hold the shape once it's in one. You can see that by just grabbing the neck, I can bend it into a new position. It's not quite as easily posable as I'd want, but given the constraints, I'm really happy with this solution. Finally, to finish off the look, I'm going to add some more spikes with this little sub-assembly. I've gone ahead and built up the ice and fire necks too, so that we can waste no time moving on to the front legs, which are going to need to be really strong to support the weight of what's going to be a massive three-headed dragon. To that end, I'm going to start with these large prefab foot parts for their large surface area and stability. Then I'll build up some creepy long Gleok fingers using a robot arm, a rod end, and a large spike. To further enhance the stability of the feet, I'm turning to these rubber lift arms. If I force this pin through the axle hole, it expands the lift arm just enough that it will stick out slightly from the bottom of the foot and the rubber will grip onto whatever surface is underneath. I'll attach that into the foot with an axle and the all important pin. This really adds a lot of friction to the bottom of the feet and is really going to contribute to the stability of the final model. Season Zelda players will notice that our Gleok foot is missing a fourth toe, which we can attach into this little assembly I'm adding to the foot. 
Moving on to the lower leg, I'll start with a stopper axle and a ball joint, to which I can add a large cone and some Technic wheels. The second wheel can hide this gray ratchet joint I'll be using for the elbow. Next up, I'm gonna add some custom shoulder joints using an ungodly amount of ball and sockets. I'm gonna attach them in such a way that I still have three axes of rotation so that the shoulder will have a full range of motion. The axes that will have the most load, I'm trying to give more ball joints and therefore greater friction. For the bones of the upper arm, I'll turn to some Technic axles. A pair of cams can limit how much rotation the legs have when rotating outwards. I'll build up more Technic bones to this arm and attach it in to the existing structure with some more cams. For the muscular cladding of this arm, I'm gonna attach this bionicle bullrock head. Next, I'll add a pair of ball joints, to which I can connect a pair of Hero Factory shell add-ons to round out the shoulder musculature. This ratchet joint assembly is super strong and will serve as the elbow joint of our leg. To attach it in to the rest of the arm, I'll build up this Technic connector assembly. We can add this large jaw part to serve as our Gleox bicep, and add a little system assembly of these tiles for a bit more detail. Mr. Gleok has a rather spiky tricep in the game, so I'll recreate that here with some large barb parts. After building up the rest of the tricep, I'll use some Technic lift arms and an axle to attach it in to the rest of the arm assembly. In a final step before we attach the two arm halves together, I'll cover up the ball joints on the shoulder with this Technic panel part. Finally, I can connect together the upper and lower arm sections with the ratcheting joint. Let's take a quick intermission to build our hero Link to face down King Gliok. For this, I want to build the iconic Tears of the Kingdom Champions tunic. Let's use this ninja torso, which is printed with a number of belts already. This castle minifigure has two parts I want. Her pants are perfect for Hylian trousers. And Link needs this quiver as well. Next, I'll use these bag parts to represent the Pura pad and another for Link's shoulder armor. I'll steal Laloid's hair to use as Link's and replace the black gloves with some brown ones. For his weapon, I'll give him a soldier's broadsword which can either attach to his back or he can hold it for a showdown with the Gleok. Speaking of Gleoks, it's time to start building out his wings. Here, I'll start with the largest axle I could find. Onto that, I'll thread some ball joints, a Technic lift arm, and a wheel, before tapering things down with a large cone and some cylinders. For the elbow, I'm using a tire and an angled Technic connector, which I can cap off with these boat stud parts. Then, I'll continue threading round bricks onto this axle. For the shoulder joint, I've built up another ball socket monstrosity. Our wing assembly can connect in there for another sturdy joint. We can detail this joint with some droid arms and a bar, which I'll connect another of these large armor plates to. The first Gleok wrist, I'm going to build up around this round plate and a bunch of connectors. Then I can push a stopper axle through, which both secures the assembly and gives me a spot to later attach fabric for the wing membranes. I'll cap that off with a boat stud and another tire to transition from the rest of the wing. Next up, I'll build up some creepy wing finger claw thingies with these ratcheting joints, rod ends, and a large barb.
The next Glock finger is going to be built with some Technic connectors and ends in another wrist joint. I really didn't realize how chaotic these Glock wings were until I started building one. To that, I'll attach yet another finger wrist assembly to keep the weirdness flowing. Here, I'll have another stopper axle for the wing material to attach to. And then, I'm going to build up a pair of creepy fingers. One long using ratchet joints and rod ends. I'm using bars to connect to these axle holes so that the finished wing can be more dynamic in its poses. And another smaller one using just the rod ends. The next finger we need to make is really long, so I'm going to use some of these dino tail parts, which I'll cap off with a Technic bushing before building up a little joint on the other end. Then I can connect three of these tails together and add on the all important claw part. With this finger connected, I can attach the first wing membrane. I'm using these beautiful sail parts from an old Lord of the Rings set. Unfortunately, they only have printing on one side, so one of our wings will have printing on the front and the other will have it on the back. With that secured in, I'll add another junction I've built up. Then I'll attach a similarly long finger to the last one and I can add on the next wing membrane. Although these long fingers we built are pretty flimsy on their own, when we add in the cloth parts, it really strengthens everything up and makes for a pretty solid connection. Next, I have another slightly shorter finger build to add in. And I can add a third of these cloth parts. Finally, I'll add one more pair of creepy digits and one last sail part before it's time to attach the main structure of the wing. Luckily, there's also a smaller version of the cloth sail we've been using, which fits perfectly here and rounds out these bat-like wings. These are gonna be attached right by the Gleox neck connection which is going to make for a really front-heavy model. Luckily, the Zelda designers were thinking of this, and have graciously designed a large tail as a counterweight for King Gliok here. To start at the end of the tail, I'll add some brackets to a pair of Technic bricks and cap them off with two jumper plates. Then, more black jumpers can lock even more brackets for a stud reversal, where the bottom can be capped off with some red jumpers. I'll attach three of these sub-assemblies together with an axle, I'll finish detailing the bottom with some tiles. For the spikes up top, I'll start with three cheese slopes and then add in three clips for the spikes to attach into. After that, I'll add a bunch more spikes of varying sizes to the sides of the tail. I'm trying to have them transition from pointing straight out to pointing backwards as we move towards the tip of the tail. I'll build up the very tip of the tail around a snot brick where I can add a few more spikes before finishing it out with some slopes and tiles. My plan is to have this tail built around flex tube like the necks. However, since the sections here will be much wider, I need to increase the strength of the sub-assembly so it's not constantly falling apart. I've attached these rounded plates, which I can push a too long rod into, and it will connect in all the way to a hollow stud on the bracket part. This has way more strength than if I had just built up this section with bricks, while keeping that one stud thick profile that I need. And then I'll connect in some slopes for the sides of the tail. Finally, I'll add in some clips for the bottom. Attaching to them will be this belly scale. I'll use a bar plate to connect it in and lock that in place with some boat studs. With this section finished, I'll build up another similar section. However, this one will be without the red armor and will instead have some spikes on the side. I'll alternate these sections throughout the tail. Unlike the necks, this tail isn't just gonna be one width the whole way down. So to get a proper taper, I've gone ahead and built up some similar sections that are both smaller and larger than the one we built together here. The anchor for the tail I've designed to have six ball joints, 
and a spot for the flex tube to securely connect in. Now, all that's left to do is thread all the tail sections onto our flex tube. And with that, we get this beautiful bendy tail. Originally, I was thinking I'd add more flex tubes, like the neck, so that the tail could be posed in more rigid positions. It's actually really fun to play around with when it's bendy like this, and it's not like it needs to support anything. So in the end, I'm gonna leave it flexible. You can see on the underside how the armor plates make for a really nice look. Turning my attention now to the last Gliok appendages, we can start the rear legs with a pair of ball sockets which I can connect into a Technic wheel. Next, I'll tile off this large cone before adding a ball joint to the stopper axle and connecting everything together. For these rear digigrade legs, I'll make a shin out of some Technic lift arms and four ball joints for the knees and ankles. I'll connect the angle joint and then start on the upper leg with another pair of sockets. I'll add some additional Technic connectors to them and attach the knee joint. For the shoulder, I'll plagiarize my own work and reuse what we built up for the front legs. With that connected in, we can move on to armoring up this leg. I'll start things off with this weird U-shaped part from LEGO's failed Connects competitor, the Snap. To that, I'll attach some Technic bits so that I can connect a Rakshi spine part. I'll add a few more connectors to lock it together and attach it in to the rest of the leg. Now, I'll assemble these slopes together so that they can fill in the remaining gaps. To armor up the shins, I'm building this little assembly of rounded bars and clips. I'll attach that in and lock it in place from the other side. Finally, I'll connect this jaw part onto our robot hand and rotate it into place. A couple last finishing touches can round out the shoulder details so that it's properly armored and the ball joints are all covered up. Finally, I'll attach the same foot as the front legs, and it's time to move onto the body. I've built up this Technic beam and plate assembly so we can jump right into armoring it up. Before that though, I want to point out the friction extenders I'm using here and the ball socks so that the necks are held securely. There are another six ball sockets in the back with the tail to connect into. One thing I've been thinking about is how am I going to carry this dragon around? And I think I've settled on the most fun solution. I'm going to build a pop-up handle into the back of our Gliok, sacrificing a little aesthetics for a lot of fun. I just really want to swoosh this guy around. My handle can slide in here, and I'll attach this wheel so that it bottoms out against the Technic beam when I extend the handle. Next, I'll add in some plates to serve as rails for the handle. Finally, I can attach the other side of my handle and lock it in place with two more Technic beams. Now, I should be able to slide the handle out and pick up Mr. Gliok from his back here. For the actual armor, we can start things off with these massive Hero Factory shells, which are typically used as chests. Then, I have some system panel assemblies I can swing into place. Finally, I need to design King Gliok's big old belly. I want to continue the armor plates from the tail here, so I'll start using these dark red panels. To secure them in nicely, I'm building up this bracket-based assembly. I can lock everything together here with this 2x4 plate in an effort to reduce rapid unscheduled disassemblies. This single plate isn't quite wide enough to represent the number of unlucky Hylians this Gliok has probably eaten. So I'll build up these subplates that can clip in on either side of my existing belly segment. I'm going to pattern these segments along this Hero Factory ammo belt part. I love this ammo belt part because it allows this assembly to be flexible but everything is still super strong and won't fall apart on me. Next, I'll add back those side panels. This little Technic connector will be our way of attaching the belly to the rest of the body. Finally, to get the scaly pattern for King Gliok's chest, I'm going to use these Lego net parts. 
With them, I can make a really nice flexible mosaic of scales to replicate what we see in Tears of the Kingdom. With this last part completed, it's time to assemble our three-headed dragon. I'll start by attaching the three heads and necks together. Then, we can attach them in to the body. Next, let's lock them together with this scaly chest we just built. Afterwards, the front legs can attach in. Using my handy handle, I'll connect in the rear legs. Then, we can clip the tail into place. Finally, I can connect the wings, and it's time for the beauty shots. Thanks to all the amazing people supporting me over on Patreon, and special shout out to my newest patrons, Grandma and Grandpa, Alan, John Boneza, Solius, Shade, Harrison, Joshua Schur, and Axel Tahir. If you like this video, YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this one too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, happy building.